Welcome to Speaking Our Peace, where individuals from around the world share stories of their nonviolent activism in their communities. While we may be far from one another, we are all united on the long road to justice and peace through nonviolence. Today you'll hear an interview with me, Priya, and Shauna Coomer. Shauna is a dancer and educator who works in East Los Angeles, California. She's the founder of Dharma in Motion, a nonprofit focused around raising funds to support women in communities all over the world. She shares what it was like to start a nonprofit, as well as her impressions of what it means to do this kind of work, not only within our communities, but also within ourselves. Well, I am Canadian. I grew up in, um, largely in Vancouver and Quebec. And I um, I have lived in the United States now for a while. And um, my journey, a lot of my journey is, is focused around dance, um, but I've also lived in a lot of places. So actually my commitment to dance came um, when I lived in Africa for a while, when I was in my early twenties. And I, uh, I had already danced before, but experiencing dance in a ceremony um, and how powerful it was just took me to another level of understanding about what the capacity of dance is for teaching about history and, and experience and for joining community together. So um, when I returned to Canada, I also worked a lot with Indigenous people there who um, I worked with an elder for a little while doing um, assisting with healing work and and things like this. So that was a um, that's, that's been a very powerful influence on me and my dance um, focus. But I also trained as a dancer. Um, while I was in Vancouver, I also got a, a master's degree in um, in education where I, I looked at um, like Augusto Boal's work and and um, Paulo Freire and and looked at at ways of understanding how conflicts and traumas sort of live inside our bodies and and how we can articulate those into um, something transformational and um, how building relationships in community and through education really is an important part of peace work for me. So you're doing some work in Los Angeles right now. How did you come to be involved in the LA community and, um, and as well the other communities that you currently work in because you have some other work in other places in the world right now right right um well i think that i guess that gets to the core of what i believe which is that um i think a lot of the stuff that happens is through community you know through meeting people i become a different person you know so Having spent 10 years here, I, I acculturated to what is the history of Los Angeles, especially East Los Angeles, um, where I have been teaching. And um, so a lot of the people that I know are from South America or Mexico or have lived in Los Angeles for a long time, but maybe are from um, you know origins in Central America, South America, and so forth, and so there is a um, a huge emphasis here in the in the community on um, immigration and and the kind of violence that people are experiencing um, around that, and so um, how I became involved in in that work was through you know friends basically friendships that have changed me so working with dance i think you become very close with other people because you're there until all hours of the night sometimes or you know you're getting up early and going to get costumes and things like this so the um the relationships become very deep and meaningful and i believe 
that people change me, you know, when I meet them, I, I experience that. Um, Nonviolence, peace, um, those things happen in community and it takes being a very good friend to, you know, almost acting like a good friend or being a good friend to do that kind of work. Um, because I think you need to have compassion, um, experience, almost like experiencing things that other people are experiencing. And I, I believe in, um, I guess I, I have a sort of empathetic type of personality. So I, I take things in and then I, I become committed to them myself. <laughs> so that's, um, you know, I'm from a very different context in Canada, but if I'm living here, I wanna connect with the community that I'm interacting with here and what are the concerns and, and issues of that community. So I just do my, I do my best to, you know, participate. I don't think that my voice is central or anything, but it's, it's another voice that can be added to the pot. And I think I, I'm pretty good at bringing people together in groups and we, we you know, who are focused on um, particular issues and, and I love creative work in dance. I love that process. So I think that process really fosters community, a lot of community. And um, that's how the work is done through community building. You have been working in your community in LA. What kinds of work do you do there? Um, specifically, what kinds of events do you, um, are you involved in? And do you, um, what kinds of, just what kinds of work do you do? Um, well, I'll talk a little bit about um, a recent process that I did just before the shutdown. Um, we had a, a dance concert, which was called Dances of Protest, and it was focused on um, whatever issues of, of protest. I brought together a group of different artists, but that's the context where I created um, one of my more recent dance works. And that was a, um, I mean, a months long process with dancers where we um, developed these things called somatic body maps, which is essentially, um, we created an outline of each dancer's body in whatever pose that they, they wanted to be in and went through a series of um, meditations and mindfulness exercises where they looked at how trauma or negative experiences or positive experiences also live inside the body. So they might um, associate a symbol, for example, with a specific part of their body. It might be, I don't know, like a, as simple as a flower or it might be something more violent um, experience that they had that they associate with a certain part of their body. And um, so after months of doing that, that work, um, along with movement that we did together, um, we developed very meaningful connection with each other. And also um, we were looking specifically at the, the um, issue of people who are put in cages because of the way that immigration is being handled in this country. It's a very broken system with a lot of problems. And um, so it was one way to add another voice to that movement of, um, you know, work, working against the, the horrors of, of what's happening in the um, immigration system here. You know, often, often what I do is I, I lead to a dance performance that's that's held in a theater, perhaps. But along the way, there are many other opportunities for community building. I think that one of the things dance does is shows dance processes do is to show how how interconnected we all are, and how um, the way that the way that I do this process too is is really to look at um, things that are living in the body, which is how, you know, a lot of us experience, um, I guess, social change um, and transformation that needs to occur. Like we, we have 
things that we're still responding to that might have happened to us a while ago you know so i think one of the the things that results is um a sense of our interconnectedness um and ideally we would have these these um experiences as a dance group but then also maybe have workshops with people in the community um there are a lot of different ways that that we can connect through dance to community it doesn't only have to be the res the result which is this beautiful performance with costumes and so you know so a lot of places along the way that i think are equally as important To kind of help your cause and to delve into these community projects that you're talking about, I know that you started a nonprofit called Dharma in Motion. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about Dharma in Motion and what it was like starting that nonprofit? Sure. Um, yes, I, I had a very strong feeling that... Um, that I had to do something outside of, you know, we end up in these little bubbles of our worlds and, and I, I don't think of the world that way. I think of it as very international. I, um, I decided with my, my partner to, to start this nonprofit. And um, I knew all I knew was that it had something to do with dance and something to do with helping people or connecting with people across the world and then um, we brought in people that I you know from Spain or from Ecuador from here you know so um, we just kind of brought together all these different voices we all have our skills that are that we're good at one of mine is not necessarily the implementation of a nonprofit, which is like a lot of work but but luckily my my partner, husband, David, he is very good at the practical moving things forward. And so, um, you know, we all carry different strengths. So some of the things that are not my strength, I know to leave to someone else, you know, and because there's a lot of paperwork and detail to start a nonprofit, but it's also important because then if, you know, our community is very wide. I, and, and um, David is in business, you know, and so he knows a lot of people in, I, I want to say the business world, uh, you know, business leaders. And, and so um, if, if someone is going to donate to a nonprofit, it has to be an, an actual nonprofit, not, not just, oh, let's give some money to someone in Africa. Right. So um, that, that's, practical step of making a nonprofit is is um is important but you also have to have very strong relationships i think a lot of it again leads back to relationships and um to i mean for me i just brought in various people that i know or that i would meet that are interested in doing this work and i'm <laughs> i don't know kind of I, I want to use, I don't feel like the Pied Piper, but it's like, oh, this is this great thing happening. Do you want to join me? You know? <laughs> and then uh, we all just, you know, get involved. And um, I, I love people. I love relationships. So that, that's one of the things that I, I guess, bring to that, that table. But I think you have to have a lot of different types of, of skill sets at the same time, you know, and that takes work. I think you have to work through a lot of stuff to make that, that level of commitment to things as well. So, um, and, and then deciding among the core people, like what are the values going to be for this nonprofit and, and how, you know, what if we disagree on something, you know, and that I think still is evolving, you know, the, I think it's, much clearer now than it was when we started but i think it's still developing and and i think the educational component to things that i talked about today just earlier i think that needs to become more clear 
um, as an aspect of what we do. And um, as an educator yourself, but also just as someone who cares about the general state of the world, what do you view? How do you? What do you see as sort of nonviolence work as a whole, or how would you define it for yourself? Or what are the feelings that that word brings up for you of just nonviolence work or peace work? Hmm. Well, I think that's a, a very deep question with a lot of history attached to it. Um, and so I, I go back to Gandhi's work or um, Martin Luther King's work and the, the actual history of that work. And then I also think part of that work is acknowledging the like our ancestors trauma the trauma that lives in our own bloodlines um from colonization what first um you know your people european people did to themselves and then carried to other parts of the world those those um those are like bloodlines of trauma that live in our bodies and and so there's violence that exists within us and we have to process that and get through that in order to be able to have like true peace you know in our relationships and i think to to be you know i mentioned earlier part of being an activist is being a good friend you know that's very meaningful work that i think a lot of people don't necessarily get the opportunity to do if their worlds are small you know so i think one of the things that i can do is to help bring wider worlds to other people's worlds you know so that's the educational process so that's what i mean by doing that kind of work with dancers or people from all different parts of the world and bringing them together i think that that is um critical a critical part of the the work and to be able to speak critically about history and about the present moment and what is happening with broken government or a broken healthcare system or so many problems that exist and i think um sometimes um you know it's i'm a i'm you know a person with white privilege right so I'm a white ally, I guess, in the in the struggle. So that um, that carries like a huge responsibility with it, you know, to be able to, um, you know, sometimes I just want to leave when I see how broken the system is, <laughs> and I've got my little escape route to Canada, you know, my my Canadian identity. Um, not that everything's perfect there, but I'm just saying, and. Um, so, but that's exactly when my work is needed, you know, and I think it's just a quiet, subtle work sometimes in the background and sometimes in the foreground if needed, but um, it's not a, I, I've seen sometimes a more performative allies. Um, and I think that that's, those are people that I also need to work with and help and assist. And I just think there's so much work to do. I'm not sure if this answers your question directly, but <laughs> um, you could ask. I think it does. <laughs> I think that it does because I think, you know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think part of what you're saying is that there is a, you know, there's a certain amount of nonviolence work that is dedicated to making sure people are defended from violence or safe from yeah. violence. But there's mm -hmm. also a, a positive aspect of it, which is creating an inner peace or creating sort yeah. of a, a new way of existing in the world after you've experienced a really traumatic uh, life or history, as you've said. It seems like that, you know, you're doing work on both sides. There's work where you're looking after people who are 
needing direct assistance, needing food assistance, or, you know, creating their livelihood. Um, but also actually working to forge a new way of existing within themselves um, to prepare them for, you know, a different type of life, um, which is, I think, really, it's powerful to think of both aspects, right? Not mm -hmm. just the defense against food insecurity or environmental insecurity or what it might be, but also how do you take it beyond that to the next step, which is existing as a happy, safe being, which I don't know that many people in our world feel like that, you know, and I think that that goes back to the trauma that you're talking about, the historical trauma. Yeah. Yeah, I really think that that type of embodiment of peace is a central well, well, that's what I'm going to call that, the embodiment of peace, is, is a central aspect of the work that we all need to do. And it can be easy to forget, but, but you can't. And then now that, you know, if, if we enter a war zone or we live in a war zone or if some version of a war zone, which, you know, the United States can sometimes be like that, um, there, there are ways that we carry those, those traumas with us and we have to process it. So it's not just our own inner peace, but it's also how we find peace in our communities and our friendships. And, um, that work is very central to me. Yeah. What would you say to someone who is struggling to find the resources for taking on that work or doesn't know where to start? Mm. Um, give me a call. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I think that there are people doing that. Where I don't, I mean, I don't know because I don't know where that person lives or whether, you know, but we have to find each other. I mean, it, it's helped me a lot even just having conversations through Jai Jagat with people in Brazil or like, you know, Thailand. And just to know that, oh, people are, or in Rwanda or wherever, you know, people are, are elsewhere doing all of this amazing work. So one person doesn't have to take it all on, right? You just do what you can that you know to do. And, um, and be changed. You know, be changed by people. I think being humble is key too. Just, just being humble and like asking. You know, that finding, finding what's before you. You know, reaching out to people. I think if we listen to ourselves, I think we do know what to do. But um, you have to do your research and you have to find and connect to people. And I think there are great books as well. There's great, amazing work that that people have done that you can can start with too and learn from um i'm a huge fan of a book called my grandmother's hands um by resma Menachem. i think i'm saying that right and um you know other amazing books that uh you know if somebody doesn't have people near them they can start with that and connect online you know i mean we're all we're all kind of still in this half stay at home are right now measure or some of us are more fully stay at home in the united states <laughs> um so if it if it means connecting in that way to start and if i think if not to be overwhelmed is important just to do what's before you just to do small things it can be with somebody in your neighborhood you know you can help an elder next door or something you know you can there's so many things we can do all the time I think we have to stay tuned, you know, to, to like that, that seed of compassion. Like that's why meditation is important or, you know, mindfulness. I, I learned a lot through reading things like Thich Nhat Hanh or, you know, some of these amazing 
um, writers and, and those things, I mean, that's how I start my day, you know, in, in this quiet way. And then just try to think of what can I do? How can I help? How can I serve the world and make me an instrument and I'll, I'll do it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Thanks for listening. All actions taken toward justice are meaningful and powerful. So go out in your community and do good work. You'll be in good company. Speaking Our Peace is produced by Annie Luck, Ashima Vishnoi, Priya Joshi, and Reva Joshi. We can be reached by email at speakingourpeace at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Our Peace Podcast. Our music is made by Sunbear. Until next time.